uh, dear pure urology facebook peers uh, i must thank all the urologists who made the group 7000 uh, 7k group yesterday i also thank all the participants who are sharing various types of videos in the field of uh, urology and making the group active especially in the last two months uh, we are doing uh, surgical technique based presentations every other day or alternate day today the topic is adult hypospadias with cardi how to manage in a single stage first of all hypospadias is managed at pediatric level those who are experienced at managing them at pediatric level but in india because there is no problem in the voiding because the parents uh, do not give much importance and attention to the external genitalia during adolescent period or adult period or even during the marriage even after the marriage when the sexual problems arise they come to you as an adult hypospadias actually one of my uh, teacher uh, dr k ramra sir says that it is four times more tedious to do adult surgery than pediatric because surface area length of the suturing will be four times more you have to suture less tissue you have to dissect less tissue in the childhood but when you become adult dissection and doing is a patient job actually it takes time you these are the surgeries which cannot be performed faster so naturally instead of doing two times many of the studies say that one time is equally good than two times those who are traditional they say that lay open repair the cardi and then do johansson type of urethroplasty later most of these are untouched areas but definitely either ways first surgery is the best surgery and uh, incidence of fistula is there in both the ways more so incidence of stricture which is alarming to the patient as well as the surgeon and redo surgeries are always difficult so primary surgery adult hypospadias with cardi where patient says that during erection we cannot perform sex or if he says that painful erection then you have to correct the cardi and do hypospadias repair today our speaker is dr pankaj joshi as you all know uh, even i know him as close friend from 2009 after that both of us traveled in different boats but significantly pankaj has made his name in the field of urethroplasty along with uh, dr kulakarni sir and this is a long journey which is not easy and working together with a large volume of load at the same time concentrating on the academics one has to appreciate this type of work particularly representing from india and making their own methods of technique so with this i love to interview pankaj because this is the first program pankaj i think our second program he is giving briefly let us take how his career molded dr pankaj joshi Uh, uh good evening thank you for accepting the invitation thank you thank yeah. you pankaj i remember you 2009 somewhere you came and demonstrated some of the urethroplasty surgeons surgeries and uh, you did your mbbs from where pankaj from uh, sayan hospital that's lokmanya tilak municipal medical yeah. college that's Sion. in mumbai and, and then I ms from Initially, I was in Nagpur Government Medical College for about six months, and then shifted to Nair Hospital. Again, Nair Hospital. Nair Hospital. Then MCH from? Uh, so what happened is I got rank fifty-one, uh, and that time at rank fifty-one, you would not get urology. So I came to Pune, and then uh, there was a DNP vacancy in Dinarath Mangeshkar, and uh, I was only the second student, so I joined there. And then twenty ten, I got the gold medal for DNP. Then I joined Sir immediately from there. I was in Deva Patil briefly for about three months as a lecturer, but then I joined Sir, and then since then I am here right now. So have you ever thought that you will go into the so much depth in urethroplasty, or you had an idea about uh, endourology, laparoscopy, transplant, anything in your mind? No, I had not thought. I just thought that after passing my DNB, I want to concentrate for two years on a subject which I had not seen before. Uh, one thing i was very clear in my life uh, that i would never do a private practice i didn't want to carry my instruments and go to some places and operate i wanted to stick to an institution so that's how i came to sir saying that i want to learn urethra and then we discussed maybe for 6 months i stay but uh, it's been 
it's been long uh, since i have stayed there so that was the only and how, how many years of journey together both of you kulkarni sir and you we finish 11 years now this year Uh, this year, eleven years, sir. Yeah, eleven uh, years. What are the what are the good qualities, sir, has where you enjoyed? If you want to mention three qualities, with which you are impressed and continued in this uh, extraordinary journey. Uh, so, uh, to have an extraordinary journey, you have to have an extraordinary boss. So that is, I think, that's very important. And uh, never thought so much, but he's he's one of the kindest person who. who has let us do all of us including me do things with an open hand he never uh, clipped our wings or he said don't do this don't do that right from beginning to surgeries explaining he's a very fine surgeon so it's a pleasure to treat to watch him and it always happens what you learn in from your teacher is what you slowly start developing in yourself uh, he always he never stopped us from presenting in fact he was the one who promoted presenting publishing and uh, a, a human being uh, Uh, like a father uh, to every one of us. So I'll just tell a story. I have said this many times. Once we were trying to Calcutta to do a live workshop, and we were at Pune Airport, and he got uh, Paver Singlen shoes for himself, worth ten thousand rupees, and he got immediately for myself. So this very few people would do. Uh, we went to AU in twenty fourteen, and uh, we wanted to buy loops, and uh, there were a company called Acuity of Vision, which we both used. and they measure the interpupillary distance and he told them no measure for him but also measure for pankaj so if we have the same one uh, we both can have a loop so he i think he has a vision uh, which is far ahead of uh, any any one of i'm not saying that others don't have it but he just far ahead is different so uh, i blindly follow him i question we always uh, we always have difference of opinion when it comes to management and everything But uh, I think these are the these are these are few qualities. Uh, at that which year, at uh, which year of your journey, you were impressed and both frequency matched and you continued together. First year, second year, six months. When he when he caught the fire in you. Um, I never realized. I still I don't ever. I never think back. I never think beyond an hour ahead in my life. So I don't. I don't even think of tomorrow. I think only for the next hour. so if you ask me write down what i want i myself don't know what i want in life i just i'm thinking for an hour what happens to the next case and everything but uh, i think in the first 6 months it clicked then uh, he spoke to me and then uh, i said okay let me think about it and uh, it just went on and on so there was we just don't know how it happened actually the last question before we go to the introduction official yeah. which urethral urethral surgery given choice you don't want to do Which urethral surgery you wanted to do? When it is there in the list, you will be very happy. For example, if lap partial nephrectomy is there, I will be very happy. If a pediatric RIRS is there, I will be very happy. If any, uh, so me. there is there is nothing in urethra that doesn't uh, make me happy. So as long as uh, there is anything, more the complexity better because now I think the brain over a period of time starts thinking more of complex cases. I sometimes wake up dreaming about. urethral surgery of course we all have a personal life so that's all different uh i would say that uh, i never imagined that we should have a list full of otis that means someone is not doing well uh but the only thing i i do very close to my heart is i have the contact details of of all of my failures that i have and uh, i i take it very personally on my heart if my surgery doesn't go well as of now there's only one patient who has failed and i need to fix him Uh, it was factors beyond surgery he is a child 4 years operated with a pelvic fracture outside bulbar necrosis i did a pedicle tube but the entire perineum is scarred like a like a uh, what do you say mm, the keloid he has multiple keloids so we want to do an anterior urethroplasty so my failures are more close to my heart and um, uh, i know it's not in invincible but uh, that's the only thing that bothers me in life the other right. thing bothers is uh, i should not do something in life that will let down my boss that is only a thing that is constantly in my mind rest all what i do in my other part doesn't make a difference i should not let him down let the hospital down it has to go on and on and on as long as it's possible that's the only thought i have right. so every every doctor should uh, make the patient better than the previous day so if you can do it better if you are not doing you will feel bad that's nice nice of you dr pankaj joshi primary severe hypospadias With cardiac adult med single stage repair, 
Dr. Pankaj is a consultant urologist at Kulakarni Reconstructive Urology Center, Pune. At present, he serves on the Fellowship Committee on GURS, Secretary of ISORU and Secretary of Urology Society of Pune. He has a special interest in reconstructive urology and has been associated with Dr. Sanjay Kulakarni since 11 years now in reconstructive urology. He has invited novel technique, MRI in fluid fracture and device, penile retractor, which has won the third prize at PANTU SIU 2017. He won the prestigious IAUH Akrabarthi Fellowship 2018. He is also a WHO member for medical advisors in male circumcision, technical advisory group, TAG. He confirmed with faculty of eminence award in January 2010. 11 and uh, honorary fellowship by the Indian School of Urology Board of Education, Urology Society of India. He was awarded HSBUD gold medal for standing first in urology exams throughout the country in 2010. <coughs> More than 35 publications and six book chapters in his credit, he has been a national and international faculty delivering lectures and performing live erythroplasty workshops. Chandigarh Best Video Prize for Entero Erythroplasty Video Annual Urology Society of India meeting at Kochi, January 2020. IAUA, AUA Best Paper Award, AUA Chicago 2019. Best Paper Post Award, Use of Vicryl Tackers for Quality Buckle Grab, AUA Meeting Indian Section 2018, San Francisco. Fantastic career. I'm really happy for the growth I have seen in front of my eyes from 2009. So I once again thank Pankaj and uh, I wish uh, your presentation will be very, very useful for all the urologists who are practicing doing hypospadias in adult. Over to you, Pankaj. Take Thank your you so time. Much. This, this presentation will be based on the uh, Zoom and uh, will be there as a YouTube link. All the viewers, anytime you can view this YouTube link forever. That means tomorrow, day after tomorrow, after 10 years also. Over to you, Pankaj. Thank you for introducing all of us to the digital media. Uh, you force of the future and it is not easy to have 7,000 members. I would like to say, I would like to be introduced in two ways. A student of Dr. Kulkarni and a good friend of yours. Uh, we met 10 years ago and uh, we never decided this is where we will be. Rest all things are public. Now I have more than 80 publications, but all these things remain outside our well, when you walk on the road, we are just common people and you have migrated to four hospitals in all. So amazing, uh, Dr. Chandra Mohan. So always a pleasure to be in your program. Uh, I thank you for this invitation. And then uh, uh, the topic given today uh, is going to be a primary hypospadias. And uh, I thought of uh, taking an adult hypospadias, the primary. We do about 500 urethroplasties in the year, mainly complex. And that includes about 80 patients of hypospadias. Now, there's one unique uh, type of hypospadias that comes um, uh, to us, and I'm sure it must be coming to many of us. It's an adult male who comes with a severe penosphotal hypospadias. These are uncorrected in the childhood, and they usually come before their marriage saying, no, fix me up because I have a marriage to happen. And then I have a severe cordy. I'm passing urine from the bottom of my penis and uh, sort it. So there are various ways of doing hypospadias surgery. There are more than 210 named techniques. And the only thing we say is that if when there is more than two surgeries for a disease, that means no surgery is perfect. Uh, I should We should credit a lot in hypospadiology to Professor Asopa because he is the one who started uh, uh, this complex technique of prepitial flap. So this is a male adult patient is 27. Uh, this was taught to me by Dr. Kulkarni's senior colleague that when you have a hypospadias patient, you should start seeing this lines of fusion. You know, so if you see, I'll just try, I'm not going to freeze the video a lot. It's just a 30 minutes video. But if you could see this line, this is a part of penile skin. This is a part of throttle skin. You start imagining the lines and just draw the lines. And all you have to do later on is to mix and join the lines together as they would be. So I'm marking the urethral plate. I have decided that I'm going to deglove the penis because he has severe cordy. So here you can see uh, this part of the skin has a different glow as compared to this part of the skin. So the, this part belongs to scrotum. This part is actually belonging to the urethra, which is not developed. And this total forms the prefuse. So the initial orientation is just to mark. I'm just cannulating the urethral orifice because occasionally after you make an incision, it uh, disappears. 
it's a spinal anesthesia if you want you can give a general anesthesia if you can see i've just made an incision around those lines there and then i'm going to initially go deep down to the level of the bux fascia the primary intention in the mind is uh, not about the urethral plate but about the spongiosa because if you injure the spongiosa the patient is going to have a lot of bleeding i have put a, a stay stitch onto the glands and i'm going all around the uh, penis so i'm coming on the other side here again you can see the lines of fusion between the inner and the outer skin occasionally the dissection can be a little uh, scarred even in an adult patient because they have a lot of testosterone so uh, i am just going to use a atro grip forceps this is one of my favorite which comes from ascula and i'm dissecting the dartos from the bux fascia so here if you see uh, i've left that strip of skin along with the urethra i'm now doing the gts test for checking the level of cordy i always say when you check for cordy don't allow your assistant to pull this thread because if he is pulling the thread you will get a false impression one precaution we take care you can either put a needle from the glands but you can directly put it on the corpora one precaution we take is we take warm saline <coughs> when we are doing this test so we all can see that there is a level of cordy here which is more than 90 degrees so the first thing that i'm going to do is i'm going to mobilize the sponge away from the corpora so you can see this i'm i'm bending the penis down on my left hand and from either sides i'm mobilizing the sponge down once i mobilize the sponge i'm going to go across the urethra so what i'm doing is i'm lifting the urethral plate from the underlying corpora the many is many time there is a cord like structure there and once you incise the cord like structure it becomes free now i have rotated the urethra and i am bending the penis on my finger so this is almost like uh, fracturing it you know because unless you do that you are not able to incise the outer longitudinal layer of the corporal tissue i'm going to keep the inner tissue intact these are multiple parallel incisions uh, and then you remove the scar tissue which is there in between so first step is mobilizing the urethral plate second step is almost bending the penis on itself and then removing the scar tissue that is there in the hope that this is going to solve the problem of cording when it is such a severe hypospadias many a time there is corp <coughs> there is corporal disproportion so after every step i am going to do a gts test i am preferably going to pass the needle from the same area as i passed earlier and here you see there is actually no change in the cord there is a time i decide that i am going to transect the urethral plate i am doing that at the level of corona and the moment you do that you see that some part of cord is corrected so this is what happens in the hypospadias every step has to move forward once i do that again i uh, fold the penis on itself and i'm still trying to excise any scar tissue so i'm doing the gts test for the third time and as you see now here there is still a corporal disproportion so in spite of removing the scar tissue in spite of transecting the urethra i still have a disproportion at this point i have two options one option is to go and mobilize the neurovascular bundle and take a plication suture there the second option is to do a corporal augmentation now what is the principle that i have learned over a period of time uh, this is what my guru has taught me that never do a surgery on both side of the penis if i want to take a plication i wouldn't have transected the urethral plate okay once you transect the urethral plate one blood supply to the glands is gone then if you mobilize the neurovascular bundle and there is by any chance damage to the neurovascular bundle is going to be a disaster so in my mind once i transect the urethral plate if the cord is not going to be corrected by uh, any of these steps then i am doing a corporal incision if you can see here i have made a corporal incision there and i have created a wide def defect on to the corpora which is just the outer layer of the corpora so the inner layer is intact so this is going to be a y shaped defect i am marking it by the scale so it's about 5 cm by 2 cm and simultaneously i have asked my colleague to give a general anesthesia and then harvest a buccal graft there are two options 
happens many a time people put a buccal graft onto the corpora they want to do a braca surgery and come out but in the indian subcontinent the entire graft disappears after a period of time so given a chance i'd always like to do a single stage surgery so as you know the patient had a prepuce intact this is the advantage in the indian subcontinent no one does a circumcision but even in muslims if they find a hypospadias the priest the qadri does not do a circumcision so this is the most delicate step because now you have already mobilized the diatos the trick here is to use fine instruments you can use a magnification 2.5 and then i have taken a new blade uh, sir uses swan morton so this is one of the most top quality blades in the world and then i am making an incision now in between the skin and the underlying diatos tissue <coughs> so what i'm doing now is i'm mobilizing the diatos and separating the skin in the hope that i want to do a pedicle prepucial flap here this is slightly challenging after you have mobilized the diatos but should not take uh, more than 10 minutes we keep doing it a lot for our bulbar urethral necrosis so i would like to describe here that a blood supply to the perineum to the penis comes from two aspects one is the internal penetral artery which comes in the alcox canal and has three branches the cavernosal artery the dorsal penile artery and the bulbo urethral artery so this supply the penis and the urethra the external iliac artery gives the femoral artery it has three branches one of it is superficial external parietal the superficial external parietal gives rise to the scrotal branch and it comes dorsally onto the penis so the wall of the penis the penile skin the scrotal skin is supplied by the external iliac through a femoral while the internal part of the penis is supplied by the internal iliac and this is the main difference so even in pelvic fracture if there is damage to the internal iliac artery the external is supplying the skin so as the blood supply comes dorsally i am going to incise the flap ventrally so uh, the vessels are going to come dorsally which you can see here so this is the delicate dissection that you have to do and if you can see these are going to be the vertical vessels which supply the blood to the prepuce so i have two options here again i can take prepuce from one side since i'm standing on the right hand side of the patient i want the prepuce to come from front you can also make a button hole and bring it so this is going to be a wide prepuce i'm making an incision onto the native urethral plate and then without having a tension i'm suturing the native urethral plate to the underlying corpora so i i thought that there was a slight tension because once you rotate the flap there is a chance that there is going to be penile torque that won't happen if you mobilize your uh, flap well and now i'm going to tubularize the prepuce so at the edges i'm taking interrupted sutures this is 50 pds suture which is one of our favorite the needles of j and j are amazing that is the advantage they will never they will usually not fail you if the needles fail in j and j means there is some problem with the amount of force you are applying uh i put it on record that uh, since dr chandra mohan likes it uh, i put it on record that i love wilson's needle holder this is an atro grip needle holder and uh, it's about 6 inches and it's fabulous so an ascula forceps uh, uh, wilson's needle holder and a suture of j and j these three things are required i uh, for me they are more important than my vehicle and my belongings with this you can do any surgery so this is a subcuticular continuous suture that i have done so i have tubularized the prepuce into a complete uh, tube yeah. and uh, yeah sorry you are doing continuous subcuticular yeah i am doing continuous subcuticular sutures so we have done about uh, more than 180 flaps now in the last 5 10 years mainly for bulbar necrosis and hypospadias is just one part of it only at the edges i'll keep it interrupted uh because occasionally uh, because that is the anastomosis so that has to take the brunt so here if you see uh, eventually i have taken the tube from my side that is the right hand side of patient now i'm going to create a good glands wings uh, this is what we called as keepering of the glands uh, and the idea of keepering of the glands is uh, to see that the tube goes in deep so i have harvested a buccal graft my colleague has harvested and now i'm taking a 50 pds suture and i'm suturing the buccal graft into the defect that i've created in the corpora you can use bovine pericardium i'll show you in a short clip you can use a saphenous vein people use dermal graft whatever comes easy if you ask our experience my experience with buccal graft has been the best 
it never gets infected it takes off very well you have to imagine the open corpora is like a vascular tissue on that you are putting a sub mucosa of the buccal graft which anyway has a high uptake rate so the resilience is amazing i would take continuous sutures and uh, this preferably have to be uh, water tight because you don't want blood to come out and form an hematoma this is buccal mucosa you are keeping in this horizontal defect yes i am keeping buccal mucosa and the horizontal defect on the corpora so okay. i have gone yeah. Straight. I started at one corner and I have come around the entire buccal graft as a continuous suture. Okay. And now I am doing Do a GT stage. Does this not affect the erectile function? No, it doesn't affect young patients. It doesn't affect. So this is the same principle as we do in pyronies. So now I am doing the GT stage, and this is very important. If your assistant is going to touch it, you have to stop it because otherwise you will get a false impression. See, this is trying to pull. I said, no, 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 don't touch, don't touch. Let it, let it go alone. Okay, and now you can see an erect penis. There is no traction on the suture. Okay, there is going to be a slight tilt, but like any curvature less than ten degrees is acceptable. You saw initially the penis was bent. Now it is straight, and yeah. um, it is going to perform its part. So, but in that, if you pull the thread, it will look straight only every time. Yeah, so never allow. That's a never allow that a, a, right hand to pull. That's a perception. That's yeah, not yeah. good. Yes. So. Yes. So now what I'm doing is I'm doing an anastomosis between the spatulated end of the tube, okay, and the native urethra. And my intention is to have the suture line come towards the corpora, so there is no risk of having a urethral cutaneous fistula. So this is an interrupted suture line. If you see, I take six sutures there, and then I have keepered the glands. If you see, and then I have uh, I'm taking two stay sutures on the glands. and i'm going to fix my urethral plate deep inside so that there is no majority of the times when they do a flap the meatus tends to be hypospadic for me it is very important when i talk to the patients after the urethra is fixed and fistula is fixed they say i'm not happy with the shape of the glands i take the meatus terminally in each and every of my patients for hypospadias there is only about 5% where the glands is ill formed do i give them a subcorneal meatus So the idea of reconstruction, I was once in SRMC Chennai in Porur in a surgical training for my MRCS, and there one of the head of departments told the idea of the reconstruction is to create something beautiful as long as it looks as good as original. So if my meatus is at the tip of the penis, I want the patient's meatus to be at the tip of the penis, and I'll do anything possible to achieve that. Fine. So I, I I always say jokingly that it is birthright of every man. to pass urine from the tip of the penis this is a statement that i make very blindly which is very important so even in bulbar necrosis if there is no pedicle tube i'll put anterior urethroplasty there is nothing mitrofenox is a failure i'm not saying it is not needed but you have to do everything possible to make a patient as normal as possible functionally physiologically so if you see i have uh, done the glands what if you argue that it will become sterose if you go put into the tunnel of the flaps of the glands so if so, it becomes stenosis you can do a meatotomy later but uh, you talk to the patients who have a subterminal meatus and they are not happy with the shape their yeah. partner is not happy with the shape playing or playing also will be there you uh, know also yeah so i i prefer taking my meatus uh, term maybe i am it's more young blood maybe i'll have some failures in the future maybe i'll mellow down but i won't leave my aim of giving them a terminal meatus yeah so uh, i am suturing the dartos over the flap if you see the entire suture line of the tube has gone dorsally so with a dartos cover so unlikely and now you see the organ on its own is lying on the abdomen that means the cord is corrected yeah and then i'm just going to suture the skin back uh, sometimes i overlap it but when you try to overlap <coughs> uh, it can form a cord uh, it can form a torsion there so uh, this is what i believe so if you see in the initial picture the scrotal rugae were going up your aim should to bring them horizontally and then uh, give them a single stage uh, uh, correction i keep the tube for 6 weeks because it is a flap this is on catheter removal uh, we have more than <clears throat> 71 patients and uh, this was in fact a part of a live hypospadias workshop and if i am correct dr chandramohan sir one of the fellows from your unit are also joined so it's not that you have done a recording this was being transmitted live and i have just 
edited that recording uh, for the sake of uh, the unit very so good this is this is uh, what i prefer in a single stage correction i'm just going to show you another small clip uh, where the same technique is used uh, but instead of a buckle graft i'm going to show you a bovine pericardial graft okay so again uh, i am not showing you the initial dissection but this is how uh, we are going to take a flap there just marking the flap again so flaps are have become our favorite unfortunately we are getting a lot of failures and earlier uh, we used to have less complex and more simple now we have more complex and less simple cases what is the horizontal width you have taken uh, i have taken 3 cm 3 3 cm 30 mm 30 mm so i know it is going to form a diverticulum uh, we may have to reduce the diverticulum but that's the best thing and this is what i wanted to show that uh, if you have an excellent instrument and you are in the correct plane is unlikely you are going to meet any vessels hmm? you can see the vessels to the prepuce here so you preserve this to the dorsal penile skin i am leaving the vein intact if you see here the idea is once you uh, devascularize the penile skin you don't want it to turn black uh, many a times we hear uh, people saying the skin turns black but i think it's a matter of uh, practice now it becomes so the entire process of harvesting a flap for us uh, we just time today is about 11 minutes uh, no use if you see i am not using any diathermy there i just give pressure and these are capillaries and venules they are going to just heal some people will put lot of stay stitches and pull through the stay stitches you are using the back of the finger and then rotating which yeah. is it gives me a better feel it is a difference between open and laparoscopic surgery here everything is open my finger knows the depth so here i am showing another patient so this is very classical i remember once doing this three patients once a day uh, so this is very classical story that we have an uncorrected phenostotal adult male if this is a child i would exactly do the same way uh, the idea is to give a one stage correction as far as possible if you do a stage urethroplasty then the graft contracts everything contracts and then there are multiple failed surgery so here again i am making an incision on to the corpora here so there is an egidius principle that you have to use it's a y shaped incision and now i have taken a bovine pericardium graft so if you ask so i am going to take 30% longer graft than what i need in the in sometimes with the graft contract or there can be a fibrosis at the end and bovine pericardium is routinely available in india mm. uh, the cardiac surgeons use it i like it from a company called saint jude's they make bovine pericardial patch and there is now another company i forgot the name but they are doing a tissue engineer pericardial patch and a lot of study they are doing studies with this with the urethroplasty uh, we do not recommend it uh, though it's getting published uh, you cannot use a pericardium as a substitute for urethra urethra is an epithelium pericardium is like a cartilage there so here if you see it's like a little bit of more crumpling but a continuous suture and then uh, you can just correct the cavity miro one of our colleagues uses a watch shape do, do you quilt it no i don't quilt it you just have to wait for it to heal on its own then how come this is graft na no? uh, it lasts because eventually it's like a dacron graft they use on the aorta eventually it forms a wall because the outer wall of the uh, corpora is the same so that's how it is and then again take a uh, flap up and then tubularize the rest of the part is the same uh, as i say i'm going to pay more attention towards uh, the glands keepering and creating a terminal meatus so we'll and just see that the screen perpetual flap will be less length uh, somehow i never felt that so if you see uh, major i did that actually i'm not uh, talking it uh, the girth of a penis is almost 12 cm when erect we don't realize it's almost equal to the length of the penis many a times and it's a thick organ so your graft when when your flap when stretched can form a tube up to 12 to 14 cm in that case do you advise a stretched uh, stretched tube or non stretched how much you have to stretch you can no, it comes it comes very easy cm more so so, so if you stretch before you end the final this end the another end is this so the tube will have its length it is not an elastic thing so after a limit uh, it will not uh, uh, lengthen itself so usually about 10 to 12 cm 
adapters is the length that you can get normally in adult uh, when you do quarti flap there is a problem of the diverticulum and uh, a loose uh, skin which forms a large diverticulum where flow get affected yes in this flap do you think that type of problem anticipated or no it will happen uh, it a diverticulum always happens all these patients have post micturition dribble but the diverticulum will enlarge if you have a meatal stenosis so as long as you take care of the meatus everything is going to be okay so here if you see now again i'm giving him a terminal meatus yeah in between the gland swings you are going deep and then deep gland swings and glands in two layers so this is the inner layer i make with 40 vicryl and then the outer layer i make with a 40 uh, the rough thickness of the gland swings we have to take when because there is no plane here how do you decide the gland swings they usually don't get necrotic but how much so, uh, thin so they have to be made you can see two corporal tissue and you should open the glands like an umbrella so can you see here it's a sub terminal meat uh, terminal meatus and yeah. you just create a glands there will be lines you just have to join the lines and uh, make it as normal as possible okay and then the rest of the closure is the same there what happens so this is how we do and uh, Uh, my experience with bowen pericardium graft this is our experience is uh, i have had two patients getting infection so this never happened so given a choice now the bowen pericardium cost about 36000 rupees it comes in a big sheet so people actually make into small pieces it comes in a formalin thing and uh, we don't realize that there is a technique of washing it thoroughly before you decide uh, to um, use the graft yeah Yeah. sorry did you finish yeah i finished the two videos yeah. i just wanted to uh, yeah. show you, show you a small concept uh, if if we have time so yeah no problem you finished yeah. a little early only 538 yeah so good uh, exactly this part we want surgical technique based no surgical theme. technique so since uh, since it was about surgical technique i just wanted it to you know uh, 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 stay like this so yeah so here um, i'm just going to make a short this is already published okay we got this published uh, recently in journal of clinical urology and uh, this is what uh, is a small presentation what i wanted to make uh, yeah okay so i'm just going to share the screen with you okay so this is another similar cases that we have of hypospadias and uh, you know uh, so here we see uh, this patient didn't want uh, he had a skin line urethra so i didn't want to transect then i wanted to do a plication so if you want to do a plication then you mobilize a neurovascular bundle on both sides you start by the side of urethra from both the sides and you can see the dorsal artery is here the dorsal vein here and then it becomes like a bow and arrow where you are going to hitch it so now uh, what you have to imagine is that the two corpora are cylinders you agree and the cylinder has a convex surface at 12 o'clock position yeah so even after you mobilize the neurovascular bundle very rarely do we take a midline stitch in an adult in pediatric small penis they make a small incision and take a stitch but again when you take a stitch it is again at the most convex border of the urethra Okay. Can you see the beautiful vessels here, neurovascular yeah. bundle? But yeah. eventually, you are taking a stitch at ten o'clock position and one o'clock position to make the penis straight. Yeah. The entire the entire fear in a cordy correction is uh, that if there is a damage to this neurovascular bundle, we have seen black glands. I've seen that happening in a live workshop. So what I suggest is uh, rather than doing that, here you can see uh, this is a cordy patient, and then I'm going to do his hypospadias repair. so i have made a para urethral incision i am mobilizing the neurovascular bundle but i am not going to go across because eventually my stitches are at 10 o'clock and 1 o'clock position so this yes. is what i have published called as partial mobilization of neurovascular bundle so you can see the beautiful dorsal penile artery mobilizing the bux fascia like two wings do not go across so there is no fear of injuring the dorsal artery and vein because eventually you are going to take suture at 10 o'clock and 1 o'clock position so this is what i am showing that you mobilize the partial neurovascular bundle this is the most convex border and then you can make a penis straight so this will work in 90% of patients so we have published that uh, in, in general of clinical urology 
and uh, you require neurovascular bundle mobilization only in the few patients where uh, there is severe uh, severe cordy yeah is it done yeah it is done it is yeah. done any more video you want to uh, i just uh, wanted to uh, uh, i can show you lots of videos nothing is planned but uh, yeah i have to end this, this powerpoint this is uh, what i wanted to show to you so i'll just uh, try to share the screen are you able to see the screen no 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 now i'm seeing you only okay just a sec i have to end this show and then i reshare yeah i'm not able to get my zoom organized Mm-hmm. Okay, somehow it is not it's not okay. allowing me. To, we will have a couple of that. questions. Yeah, go on. Um, see, when you uh, close the skin at yeah. the coronal junction, the four flap junction. Yeah. Sometimes uh, uh, skin will. There are a couple of basic questions I am asking. Yeah. I am a great expert of hypospadias. When you make a four. corner uh, suture at the exactly at the sulcus yeah. uh, in a uh, frenular region yeah. uh, usually there is a chance of necrosis and skin will be very uh, thin yeah is there anything that one side you can take cross flap and other side you cut it off and do it so that the suture line doesn't fall see all the problem starts with the skin infection usually yeah uh, even the fistula i am not talking about but yeah. the morbidity yeah. what is the tips and tricks to make a proper a uh, ventral aspect of the uh, four uh, skin corner no so what happens is you uh, as long as you are in the correct plane uh, everything is going to be fine so that is one thing at the four corner i actually tend to trim the edges there so once i trim the edges i i will be in the correct plane all together so that is what i do many of the times the uh, the fistula and the stricture forms at the proximal end at the anastomotic site so do you wanted to do this closure like a oval shape interrupted with magnification and if at all end to end these the not is inside or outside is it subcutular or full length of the skin with minimal margin what are your tips to avoid stricture as well as fistula at the proximal tube re- uh, tube reconstruction i mean anastomotic so once i make a tube so it is it's like a a rectangle if you realize you know so it's like a rectangle that is there so once i rotate the rectangle at the both edges i'm going to keep it spatulated wide i'm not going to do a oh, round well. thing yeah i'm going to keep it spatulated and even the proximal urethra is spatulated distally of course it is a part of meatus so uh, this is what we developed while i was doing surgery with my fellow so it's always uh, good to listen my fellow told why don't you spatulate it so even after having done 40 50 tubes then i started spatulating uh usually i don't see an anastomotic narrowing because the skin has a robust blood supply uh, the only thing that i do is occasionally i trim both the sides because as you said that is the most ischemic uh, region of the stricture so i trim them when you release the cardi yeah uh, you sometimes go to the bottom of the penoscrotal junction still yes. you feel that something is holding you keep yeah. on going up to almost like a, a base of the penis and then below this scrotum is it worth releasing after certain extent this cardi structure this is a, a spongio uh, urethral spongiosum which is fibrosed so usually it is uh, not useful because uh, what happens is the cardi is always in the shaft of the penis it is never in the part of the penis which is in the corporal structure so it is still the band which needs to be released fibrotic band rather than dissecting So if you have dissected till the penoscrotal junction or some of the penis, you still don't get it. That is a perfect case either for complete penile disassembly or a corporal augmentation. Does the skin of this uh, released uh, uh, cardi part will be used for reconstruction of the tube because it is not devascularized? Are you better excise the skin and go still more proximally? In which case your tube will go more more proximally may not may not be good. i uh, usually such scenarios don't arise we are able to uh, get so in fact uh, i'll tell you from my experience 
very rarely do severe penoscleral hypospadias or a perineal hypospadias patients have a small penis the organ is very long it is just the cordy that makes it shorter so if you see the beginning and the end picture it is long and the skin is worthwhile so i don't believe that the organ is small in all the pay 90% of them in fact have a good organ 90% of the people are worried about the growth of the penis after the hypospadias they are all cripples do their like now you have vast experience of more than 500 cases you might have seen growing them you, you might have seen even coming to the marriage stage most of their penises with my ex, small experience look small and they will have little bit of erectile dysfunction and are they suitable for early rehabilitation with uh, sildenafil or do do you apply any testosterone creams or do you advise for sexual counseling and have you have any experience post hypospadias going for uh, uh, penile implants i have no experience of going for penile implants i always believe uh, that this is more in the mind than in the organ uh, they always have a, so if we, what is my finger length will remain my finger length i cannot make it bigger and smaller so even after releasing the suspensory ligament you will get an so growth of the penis when you do at around 5 to 10 years of age after i said don't i said when you are, the voice of your son changes that is that i am come to me and look at his i i tell my parents stop asking your son how is your urine flow stop looking in the pants how the organ looks don't do anything observe silently don't push him because otherwise on the child psychology it keeps playing that there is something wrong in the genitals so i i i i would say it perfectly this way a child's mind is like a wet cement whatever falls on it will cast an impression if the child grows up knowing that there is some problem in his penis he'll always have the thought process they if you talk to the hypospadias patient they have a traumatic childhood they remember going to the surgeon and everything so i tell them just stop bothering don't look even if there's a fistula i want to see it i'll look everything at the end of 6 months don't ask your son how is your urine flow what is the size of organ at 14 in life everything becomes normal you get the adams apple you get testosterone the organ goes they get an erection everything becomes normal in fact sometimes now they come for me for two reasons one is an uncorrected penoscleral transposition which is what i was trying to show but the presentation didn't allow me to switch over to zoom and the second thing is to create a meatus back to the tip of penis so if you give them a good meatus they're fine if the glands is very wide with good wings and the deep groove do you feel to utilize that part uh, for the reconstruction or you will just cut it and put the tube and remove that skin no i will just uh, make it a uh, little uh, as i'll keep it a little loose i don't make it very tight because i know sometimes i can do a me- i have had to do meatotomy in about five of my patients but no, eventually no, they- if the glands wing glands is uh, i mean hypospadias glands no, is no i don't cut i a glands according to me is the most vital structure in the penis uh, there are some people who trim the edges for suturing that's okay but i will never cut off a glands tissue i will keep it as it is i'll never cut it off because uh, it's very simple whatever is excise will never come back in life yeah yeah so my, you, my uh, okay uh, after the hypospadias repair you said 6 weeks you will you will remove the tube do you perform any test like pericatheter rg or mcug widening or you do you just remove the tube and observe so i would re- keep it for 6 weeks uh, because this is a pedicle tube if i do a pedicle tube in a child i would remove it at 3 weeks usually hypospadias i remove at 10 to 15 days uh, the the worst part about hypospadias so this is the so there is psychology of the patient there is psychology of the parents and then there is psychology of the surgeon operating the worst part about hypospadias is you start seeing your child in every patient you operate okay and then when they come for a follow up the parents are looking directly in the eyes so if you are seeing a fistula they have already seen a fistula if you are seeing a black skin they already seen a black skin the only thing i do is have a look at the organ everything looks good if there is a fistula i tell them there is a fistula so the counseling is i tell them there is a 70% chance everything is going to be okay there's a 30% chance that everything will open up there's a 15% chance the glands may open up there is a 10% chance of a fistula but whatever it is we'll fix it in the second surgery very rarely uh, do we need a third surgery but everything will be all right usually everything gets solved uh, the success rate of a pedicle flap is almost 90 95% but you quote a lower percentage than what is reality because you know the parents are well prepared 
that doesn't mean i'm preparing them for multiple surgeries but they they remain happy and you tell them the truth there is a fistula so i is there any role of uh, spc in these surgeries primary or secondary repairs any role whenever you do it some I people think... traditional surgeon used to put and divert and make the everything comfortable they feel with the high doses of anticholinergics i feel a catheter in the bladder is a spasm to many a patients i have seen very few patients who tolerate catheter i had initially started putting an spc but one of my patients the balloon went in the prostatic fossa so the child kept crying and then i had to remove it so that's if you can keep an spc if you are going to keep only a penile stent if it is going to be a through and through catheter there is no role of an spc you are don't additionally burden it so i don't i do not now last 8 years i have never put it a couple of questions to prevent the infection in these cases three questions number one is which antibiotic and how many days number two is use pre urine culture mandatory in adult and number three is what type of dressing for how many days when will you open the first dressing so usually these are unobstructed patients so they don't have urinary tract infection the urine culture usually comes sterile uh, if i'm using a flap which is part of a skin i'm looking at a gram positive bacteria which is there on the skin Yeah, so yeah. I give them amoxiclab along with a low dose levofloxacin, very low dose, three seventy five amoxiclab with a two fifty levofloxacin. If I use the buccal graft, then only levofloxacin. Uh, and uh, otherwise, uh, infections are rare; they don't happen often. You know, if you have your sterile precautions and everything, I do my first dressing at day four for all the patients. Do Not you do before that? Right, dressing with uh, uh, the uh, so what do you call? Uh, Either the dynaplast or just a wrap. There is a special dressing material called as Coban. It's available from 3M. So it is like a dynaplast, but not so firm. You know, it's like a a nice wrap, wrap around. So I use that. Uh, if not a simple micro pore, if it is not soaked, I will not touch it till day four. Day four. But Last the glands has to be visible. Last question: When you see the fistula, when you see the stenosis postoperatively. after the catheter removal within one week two weeks three weeks one month like that so naturally patients will be unhappy and some drops of urine leaking at the site in duration then you will give antibiotic you will wait you will not do spc some amount of stream will be coming as the days pass on half of the stream comes from front and back then at the end of the six months it's a formed well developed fistula when will you repair and what is the most important precautionary test you will do before repair so uh, uh, what happens is we all believe hypospadias is a bad disease we all have a belief in the mind it never becomes all right i'll tell you a story when my son was born i was in the or because my wife needed uh, and multiple anesthesias and uh, the only thing when i first i didn't bother i was worried about my wife but when it was a son the only thing i looked at is the penis is there a hypospadia so that is the fear we all have but i'll tell you something life is beautiful and not many have this problem hypospadia patients become all right if that is what you are doing over a period of time so if there is a fistula you tell the parent there is a fistula no antibiotics is going to cure fistula they don't need an antibiotics as long as the urine is coming call them in your clinic directly at 3 months if you keep coming every day your psychology goes down and the patient psychology just send him home tell him you put a finger on the fistula pass urine from the tip whatever it is at 3 months you see them if everything is okay you fix the fistula our success rate of fistula closure is 100% normally when someone says 100% you should never believe but this is our data so if you go on the youtube channel i have highlighted the three ways of doing fistula closure and uh, it's beautiful you there's a spencer wells technique and everything so if there's a fistula i'm not worried if there is a stricture it doesn't bother me at all what bothers me is a cordy because if there is an uncorrected cordy that is the most difficult thing to repair in a redo hypospadias so a stricture fistula a transposition makes no difference excellent. don't look at them call them after 3 months everything becomes all right excellent excellent answer last answer but only 100% is little uh... yeah <laughs> so you have to, you have to send your colleague for uh, Well, so uh, there is a way of yeah. I, I, that's why I said you will never trust me. If someone tells me hundred percent, I will never trust. Why is that? Yes, sir. Sir, I always says that don't use two words, Chandra Mohan. Never and always. Perfect. He, he always then, uh, mentions so, to me this whenever I do something. But I am happy that uh, your results are your results. I, I, I am. I am waiting. 
I'm waiting for my first fistula to fail. So I know it will happen one day. And boss always tells me that one day you'll get a black, black glance punkaj, and then uh, you will start thinking differently. So that is the only thing that bothers me when I'm doing. Actually, recently you have asked me, me to think that to look at the temperature of the glands after any of the surgery yeah. on the penis and perineum. So I, I in so, fact, I put a put a needle and check the bleeding. But uh, as I said, don't do surgeries on both side of the penis at the same time. Yeah, you follow yeah. that principle, then unlikely it will happen. Unlikely. Fantastic. And mm-hmm. our data is kept horizontally. for the last 21 years more than 7000 cases every case is followed up so anyone is most welcome and cross checks our fellows now keep writing paper we keep calling people and uh, as this are all referred suppose you send me a patient for a fistula it fails you would immediately call me up so we have all our failures in our home. my form is uh, only for failures once someone becomes all right i delete the number very good excellent i appreciate your confidence i appreciate your sincerity i appreciate your understanding of the subject and uh, so much dedication for this we need more people like this so that at least difficult cases can be done by the people who are dedicated i really appreciate today's talk it will be there uh, forever uh, as a good memory in the youtube thank you pankaj and uh, thank you very much for uh, sparing your valuable time so uh, dear friends keep uh, listening we will give a little pause uh, in the next programs on the uh, new year first uh, we are having a good talk on pcnl how to make proper puncture and avoid complications by dr ravindra sabni sir keep watching the pure urology and uh, let us share the knowledge and update our knowledge and be a better surgeon for your uh, best patient thank you very much every morning i wake up i want to see what is the program in pure urology majority appeals when it's reconstruction i don't want to miss it and i just wish this goes on and on so you create so much of digital media literature that becomes easy for everyone so thanks a lot for inviting and uh, wish you all good at the team there